Alright everyone, today we are working on a 1998 Ford 555E. Our right and left swing cylinder are leaking hydraulic oil, so it is time to rebuild them. In this video, we are taking a deep dive approach and filming everything we can and providing narration of what we are doing throughout the process. Up on the screen, I have a still image of some tools you're absolutely going to need to do this rebuild. You'll need something to open the gland, a spanner wrench or something to pound it open. You're going to need ring clip pliers, and then you're going to need large size wrenches, be them crescent wrenches or pipe wrenches. All right, so the first step you're going to want to take is you want to try breaking the gland free. We don't have video of this because we did it in the evening, but we did it with our spanner wrench, a ratchet, and a cheater bar. After you break it free, you can see we've just broken it free a little bit, then we'll go on to removing the pin. Uh, there's a cross pin, and then you'll just pound the pins out through the bottom. Here we have a shot of the pin specifically that is pulled out. It goes through horizontally. Ours had a ring clip on one side to hold it in. The other side was actually missing it, so we just pulled it out that way. Once we got it loose, we swung it sideways. They pivot. Uh, if you break them both free, there's the benefit of being able to move them both a little bit. We are working with the hoe in the straight position, so you have pretty good access to both. You can see on the far one, we're using a chisel. The holes on the gland were not in good enough shape to fit the spanner wrench in, so we just used the chisel and pounded on it to open it. Feels look good. Mint. Oh, I just heard some air get behind it. <laughs> Yeehaw! Okay, so right now we're working on the left swing cylinder. This is the rod that sticks out. Yours will have the gland on it about here. And then on the end, this sticks on and there's this giant bolt with a ton of Loctite on it. Inside of it, you'll have this little spring rod in the end. So to disassemble all this, uh, as you see, we'll cut to it. We opened the, we broke these free on the tractor. We actually put the tip of this rod into one of the stabilizers and bolted it in to hold it. We've broken other ones free with a large impact this is a harbor freight three quarter inch impact and it does the job just fine if you run it from a good air compressor uh, if you have trouble getting the gland off just because the seals are old doesn't mean it's just going to miraculously slide off you can just sit there beat it with a mallet until it gets down to the end and then throw it in like a bench vise uh, so next step we're going now that we have everything off i've already cleaned these components inspected it this push rod is what slows down your swing. So when your rod extends, it goes down and cuts off the hydraulic flow, making a damping system. Uh, so that's what this is. Uh, this is your plunger on the end. Part of the rebuild, we'll be replacing this. We'll begin to that later. Since all that is clean, next we'll be cleaning the gland. Uh, make sure to do a good job cleaning Inside of here, a lot of times the wiper seal will be completely deteriorated. We have two swing cylinders we're rebuilding and one didn't have any. And if you look closely uh, inside of there, there's actually the race from the seal that was pressed in there. And you don't want to try pressing your wiper seal 
and when this is in there because you'll just taco your seal and then you'll have to spend 30 bucks on another one. Cleaning it is pretty straightforward. We just used brake parts cleaner until we ran out and then we switched over to carb cleaner because that's all we had. We also took some scotch bright to it and got anything off the metal that we could. We used a pick on the threads. After getting it clean, we start working on removing that piece of aluminum from the wiper seal that's in there. Just took a screwdriver of various sizes, worked it slightly larger until we got an edge up and then pried it out. Once you get that out, we start removing the seals, starting with the buffer seal, then pulling out the internal seal. And finally, at the bottom, start pulling out that Teflon slider. Recommend you keep the workbench clean and keep them in order so you know kind of where they go in. They only fit in one space in it, but then you kind of have a rough orientation of which way they are originally in there. All right, so we put all the new seals in, got real clean. Starting from the outside, you have this little buffer. There's a nick in it that goes, if this is facing up, so like towards the barrel, that goes towards the barrel. So it goes like that with the little U facing up. Next, you'll have your internal seal. This also goes with the U facing up. So it'll be facing this direction, goes in like that. Uh, do yourself a favor and get one of these. You'll see it in the video. We paid 30 bucks, I believe, shipped for a three pack of all the different size ones. And it bends the seal into a W. You'll see it in the shot. It makes your life a lot easier. Uh, next goes in this slider. It's a huge pain to get out. Huge pain to put back in. There is a beveled edge here that helps you slide it in it might be closer to this side but it's easier to put in from this side last we'll be pulling the wiper seal in and let me grab where's our bag of seals right there not these oh here all right the wiper seal is currently in the freezer but we have another one to rebuild here in a second, so I'll grab the wiper seal out of that. And if you've ever done a wheel bearing and put seals in, you probably put it in like this. But on a hydraulic cylinder, everyone we've rebuilt per the manual, you'll put the U facing up. You can't see it here, but on the one we pulled out, that puts the aluminum race down and flat. So this one faces out towards the rod end when you put it in. Now when installing the slider, the only good tips we have are grease it up and if you have extra hands, use them. We ended up using channel locks to kind of squeeze it and then forced it in there. And then once it's inside, tapped it in with a mallet. When rebuilding our stabilizer cylinder, the kit did not come with the correct size slider. It was not the right width. So be careful on eBay kits. Some are correct, some are not. And uh, before you go mauling anything when removing it, give your kit a good once over. Now we're using the tool that I talked about earlier, bought it off eBay. And you just put it on the ring and fold it. This seal went in there okay with it. Some go in like a dream. Other ones, they just seem not to cooperate. The bigger the seal is, the kind of harder it is to W and the less good the tool works. But 
it is still nice at least getting it partly in there and then you can just work it with your hands. Next goes in the buffer seal. Uh, as mentioned earlier, there's a little notch in the top. You want that facing towards the cylinder barrel. So if you're working with the gland face down, it would be up. Next, we're pulling the O-rings on the outside. The video freezes, so there's not a good video of this. That first flat one goes on vertically like that. Uh, there is room for it to twist sideways, so you'll just want to like flip it up with your finger and then put the round one behind it. Next we're installing the wiper seal. We put ours in the freezer just to chill them a little bit, shrink down that aluminum so it fits in a little bit better. Some of these are press in where we have been completely unable to even start them. This one, we are at my house, not the farm, so we don't have our press. So we just started them with a mallet and a piece of wood. It went in there decent. I tapped it very gently. I tried seating it all the way around. I got it slightly seated and then we finished driving it flush with the mallet. If you notice this face, the spanner wrench holes are in good shape. This one unthreaded like a dream. Not saying that's going to happen like yours, but this one had to be chiseled open. The holes were all gnarred up, so we put new holes in the face to the correct size, correct spacing. You could take this to a machine shop, anyone with a mill could do it, or if you're pretty handy yourself, you may be capable of doing this on a drill press at home. All right, now that we are done removing the outer seal, we're gonna be pulling on this one. It's extremely tight. The best method we've found is to grease it up real well and put multiple screwdrivers and like really tiny picks in there and then use them like tire spoons to get it on the rim and then just pushing it down by hand. You'll see now that it's actually a little wobbly on there. I don't see how you could get it on there without putting that much play into it by flexing it around. Either way, we've never had an issue when installing them correctly. Now we are back at the farm and we are finishing putting in the wiper seals. We start off by finding the correct size driving disc. That's from a bearing and race driving kit. And then we just put it on the press and gently push it in. You'll see that they actually get recessed in there quite far. Now we are on to reassembly. Here we will be putting the gland back on. We just put a ton of grease on it and then beat it on there with a two x four and a mallet. Once it gets on, it'll actually slide down quite easily. When you're putting the bolt on, the manual calls for Loctite. I'm just gonna torque it really tight and not Loctite it so it doesn't get stuck on there. I thread it in by hand just to make sure it's got a nice tight seat and the threads aren't crooked in any way, shape, or form. The rod at the end should be able to actuate. Then I'll put the socket on it. That's our three quarter inch drive ratchet and we're just driving it tight before we hit it with the impact. Once again, that is the large Harbor Freight three quarter inch impact. And we just hit it a couple times to make sure it's tight. We are now back at the machine. In the beginning of this video, we are working on the left one. We actually took them both apart and did them at once, but we only filmed one of them. This one went in really well using a ratchet strap. So we're gonna show that so you guys can see that technique. The other one we had to beat in with a mallet. Using a ratchet strap is our go-to technique to do this. Both of the stabilizer cylinders that we rebuilt, we use this technique to get it in there. It might take a few alignments to kind of get it all lined up, especially between crank and the ratchet strap. But once you get it, make sure it's pulling nice and square and it should seat in there quite easily. 
We did not disconnect the hydraulic lines on these, so there's quite a bit of back pressure. We've made our way to the left swing cylinder now. Our key error here is our buffer on the outside of it wasn't seated in very well, so we didn't even show you guys trying to ratchet strap it, but we couldn't get it, and I should have pulled it out, spun that seal around, and greased up inside the cylinder a little bit, but instead I just spun it inside of there and hit it with a mallet until it went in. As you saw, we bent down and that was actually picking up a chunk of that buffer seal. We only lost a little bit and when we ended up running it later, we didn't have any problems with leaks. So hopefully that holds true. When you're trying to put it in there, if it's really fighting you, take it out, move it around and it might work better. Once you get it installed inside the cylinder, we thread the gland cap in a few turns before positioning the rod for the pin. It's honestly just easier to get it started out there because you have more room, but once it gets pretty tight, it will not want to turn without spinning the rod. So we just put one of our aluminum bars through the eye to hold it in place. We will also use that as a handle to pull the rod out and get it into position. Once you have everything lined up, you will be putting the pin in through the bottom. We pulled the locking pin from the right side, so that is where we'll be pulling it in from. It just goes horizontally through both of the swing cylinder rod pins and then pops out the other side. Now we're on to the left pin, same as the right. I'm lining it up and then Dylan is just driving in that pin from the far side. What you will not see in this video is the installation of ring clips on that horizontal pin. The problem is our backhoe didn't have one on one side uh, and it did have one on the other so we ordered some online and when we shot this video they hadn't come in yet. We have now begun the great tightening. This takes forever, slow and steady is your friend. Also if you have a half inch to three quarter inch adapter and a smaller ratchet then you can actuate the spanner wrench with that and your arms won't go numb. We did not put Loctite on these. I believe in the manual they call for Loctite. We just tighten them down as tight as we can with our 3 quarter inch ratchet and leave it at that so if we ever have to take them apart we can open them. During our rebuild we didn't disconnect any hoses so at this point it's time to fire it up and test your seals. Once you've started it and let it warm up a little bit don't move the cylinders very quickly. You don't want to yank out a seal that's stuck a little bit. You want to slowly work the full range of movement. As you can see in the video, nice and slow. As slow as you can move it, move it at that pace. And just sit there and work it back a couple times to make sure everything's seated nice and well before you start using it. Once you've ran it a few times through the range of movement, what I would advise next is to get out and do a good visual check while it's running. See if you have any leaks. Make sure your wiper seal is good. You shouldn't have anything pouring out there. Make sure your hoses aren't leaking. We found a leaking hose when we were doing our test run. And after that, you're done. Your rebuild is complete and it's time to use that machine. So this is our first of a couple rebuild videos, how-to videos. We went with a more in-depth approach. If you liked this, let us know in the comments. If you didn't like this, also let us know, just so we can provide like better content. If we're gonna spend our time doing it, we might as well do what people like.